that you tangled with those bears those, the, the, the time they ran you up the tree? I was about, it was about two miles, about eight miles down the river, which is two miles from uh, the bluffs. Um, I was walking, it was fall time, the salmon were pretty much spawned out, but there was still a lot of bears along the river, and there were a lot of washed up salmon along the river, and they were still eating on those. And, but it was, fishing was pretty much over with, and, and I figured I'd better go check out beaver lodges, you know, and find out where they are, where the feed beds are, and just mark them all down this paper and map and stuff, so, you know, the next spring you can go find them, you know, yep. over there, you know, the snow just covers them all up in winter, so fall's the time to do it. So I was walking down now, uh, the river doing that, I had about five dogs in me or something, and um, they are all pretty young dogs, and some of them were even, like, maybe three of them were first year pups or something. And I had this uh, 338 Winchester Magnum with a broken spring in the magazine. So, you know, it didn't have much oomph. Yeah. Maybe that first shell might go in, but the rest of them wouldn't. You had to almost pop them up or jump them up and get them in. You know? Hold the gun upside down or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bold action. Yeah. Winchester Model 7. You know, all the way down river, you know, there's we're passing like uh, muddy footprints and stuff. You know, bears had just been there, of half eaten salmon. You know, it's just typical for that time of year. You know, it's just you know, there's the grizzly bear that's in the slow quite a mile down, and there's the one a mile and a half down at the riffles, and then there's the you know, the mother and cubs. You know, and it's that kind of scene all up and down the river uh, at that time of year, and so. Um, you know, you don't think anything of it, and maybe a little wary or something when you go through certain areas, but you just keep moving. And, uh, anyway, I was in this one place, there was a curve on the river, and, um, about 400 yards across the curve, there was a lot of alders and small spruce, you know, along the bank, it was a cut bank, and, and I could see across the bend in the river, and about 400 yards down, there was... Uh, what looked like three bears. It was three bears, but it just looked like three full-grown bears at the time. And, uh, and you know, because it was 40 yards away, and all I could see them kind of, they were real active in the brush, and I, it just looked a little strange. It was a real hot day, sun out, and just looked like a little bit too active for that time of day, you know. And I figured maybe they smelled me or something, and I was moving them or something. They just noticed me, or I don't know. It might have been, as it turns out, it was two of them were cubs, so it might have been just something just like the cubs were playing. But at the time, it looked like you know. So I figured, well, shit, I want to keep going along that bank. You know, I want to go right by where they are, but I better hold off a little bit here because it looks like they're getting a little agitated. So I uh, figured, well, shit, I'll just wait here a little while. And then I thought, well, okay, I got three bears down there, for some reason they did just, you know, wander up this way by accident, or if they were going to check me out, I better climb a tree, because I got this broken gun, you know, I got one shot, and, you know, I'm up till that point, and even to this day, I've never killed dead a grizzly bear with one shot, I've put him down, had to finish him off, you know, they haven't been able to move after one shot, but I've never... You know, so I mean, I, they always seem to have pretty good endurance, you know, fucking rain shots, long shots, you know, I've done them all. And, they, and it just, it takes a lot sometimes to just, so charging three grizzlies, you know, I wasn't too, you know, felt too good with my one gun, or bullet in the gun, so I decided to go up a tree. And it was, it was real casual, you know, I still had my pack frame on, and I remember I stuck my map in my belt, and, uh, and you know, I didn't, like prepare for anything, I just read that, go up and sit in the tree, you know, read my map or something, leave the, anyway, I turn around, my dogs, most of the trip were just kind of like m marching right in front of me down the trail, but by now, you know, eight miles down the river, they're, they're all pooped out, they're tired of running off in the brush, and they're probably pretty much just staying right in the trail, well, now I turn around to go back to look for a tree to climb, and it's like, oh, he's going home now, you know, or he's going 
someplace different. He said, I just keep going. And, you know, they all sparked up and ran off down the trail back from where we came. And there's a sandbar we just come off of. They ran out in the sandbar. They're totally away from me now. They're gone, you know. They're, you know, they're, that kind of sparked them up, the fact that I just turned around, you know. And uh, so there I am climbing up a tree, get about 10 feet up in the thing, you know, and <coughs> start to get into the spruce branches. It was kind of a leaning tree a little bit, uh, that big, you know, good-sized tree. And it was about 10 feet away from the river bank. And, and uh, I get so far up it, all of a sudden, you know, I'm up in the tree, you know, like this. I got my gun, you know, in my hand. And all of a sudden, this, this, uh, his, <coughs> you know, the pig sounds, you know. Yep. The, the, the pounding feet pig sounds, you know. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I go, I look off to my side, about 30 yards off in the alders, there's this broadside to me, not noticing me yet, but broadside to me is this damn, uh, grizzly bear, you know, charging through the, Alders, you know, and, and I was like, oh, shit, and I just turned my head and just went to start to climb, you know, just put that arm, that gun up, and, you know, because it was, I don't know, it was just like, you know, to have turned around, and, you know, I mean, you couldn't, yeah. just couldn't do that in the position I was in, so my first reaction is get the hell up here, off my damn arm, up in position to climb, and then and all of a sudden I hear the thing hit the bottom of the tree, you know, and just, you know, up the fucking tree, and I look down, and its head's just coming up that tree, you know, it's just, you know, by about at this point, I don't think my mind was registering anything at the right speed, or normal focus or anything anymore, everything was sort of like a blur, it was happening so fast, you know, but I remember that head coming up the tree, and I remember just before he got to my leg, you know, going like, whoa, like that, you know, I had the gun, and by the stock, and I just went, Whoa, like that's just a reaction, just put something down by my leg where he was, you know, mm -hmm. coming at. And damn, he, instead of getting my leg, he grabbed that goddamn stock of the gun and right on the bottom heel or whatever you call it, yeah, the gun. The butt of the gun. <coughs> grabbed that gun with, and I got the stock. You can see like a, one fang mark sunk in and then another one slid for about three or four inches and finally went and he just, uh, well, cracking stock just took the strap was just loose, you know, it just took that whole heel off the gun, but he uh, ripped the gun out of my hand, and he went back down the tree, and the gun must have just fallen on the ground or something, that's where it was laid anyway, later when I went back, but, uh, uh, and that kind of threw me off, you know, threw my, me off, you know, and when he took that gun, and I have to go get back up like that and start trying to climb again, but I mean, before I knew it again, you know, he, he, you know, hit the ground and probably just jumped up again. I didn't see that, but he, you know, I could and see, see him coming up again. I don't even know if that second time I actually saw the head coming up. I don't even know if I looked. All I remember is next thing, you know, I just feel this, you know, numbness in my leg. And, uh, and I feel my arms going up in the air and I feel branches scraping against my arms. And that's all I know. You know, that's all I, that I remember. And probably what that was was I was going to get pulled down. And that's what the, the branches, you know, my abs are going up, the branches, getting pulled out of the branches. And I don't remember anything else. I really don't even remember. I'm not even really feeling the bite when he bit me that much. It's more just a shock. My bite just went into instant shock, you know. And, and I don't know if I passed out from the bite but or, or what, or, or from hitting the ground. Or whatever. All I remember is that was the last sensation. Going, my arms going up, and, and the next thing I remember is I'm in a cannonball, a cannonball position. You know when you jump in the water, yep, yep. a cannonball. And I'm, I'm kind of curled up in a cannonball fashion, and I'm coming to, and I'm in the water, and I look up, and there's about three feet or two feet of or something of water in between me and the surface, and all these bubbles are rising probably bubbles that I brought down with me, you know, and the cold mm -hmm. water woke me up again, and, you know, and, uh, and I just come up to the surface, and I'm, and I was, <clears throat> you know, right below the cut bank, it was over my head, but, you know, you go a few, f ten feet or something, you're back into water that you're touching yeah. the tip of your feet, and your feet in again, you know, but 
right now I'm drifting down with the current and uh, you know looking back by the tree where the gun is and going I'm not, no, I better go get that gun but I don't want to go back up and that can't really see back up in the cut bank you know see the bears I might be sitting right there and at the end the gun might barrel might hit the you know I'm thinking all these thoughts you know barrel might clog with dirt anyway and if the bear shows up you know might not even work you know and I better not go back up there but I you know still had a lot of grizzly country to go out here I am out in the middle of the damn thing and no gun but anyway I started floating down the river and uh, towards where I originally seen the bears and all of a sudden I see two bears and I recognize them as two uh, two-year-old cubs yeah. see that's what they were and that was the mother that that got me and that that's why they all look like three full-grown bears because two-year-old cubs they're not that big but at a distance they're they look bigger than not, you know, your first yeah. three cubs, you know, by far. She was after you because of her cubs. Yeah. That would be for being on the same river. Yeah. You know, her people say, you know, they always say, well, bears never bother you unless they, you harass them. Well, you know, I was in the same river as her, you know. Was, or I might have been moving her. You know, she yeah. might have been on that sandbar fishing, and, and I came along, and they walked down the trail to move away from me, whatever. Both living on the same river, you know. I mean, I don't know. Uh, but, uh, well, so anyway, I swim across the river, and uh, now I'm in view of the sandbar up river where I come, and the dog see me, go, you know, going across the river and pulling myself out of the sandbar across the river, and uh, here they come swimming across the river to me, mm -hmm. wagging their tails jumping out of the water, shaking off, you know, coming over to me. Just never, I mean, even though they were stupid young dogs, uh, you know, they were the pups and a couple of the younger, I mean, probably left the good dogs with the old lady, you know, yeah. because I was going to be gone for the day. And, and uh, they still would have distracted the damn bear. If they, had, if they hadn't run off, you know, if I had been more smart and had just kept them around me, you know. Yeah. You know, they probably would have at least distracted the damn bear because they would have went after it even, you know. You start barking, raising mm -hmm. hell, and uh, confuse the bear as to who, who the bear was going to go after. Yeah. Yeah, it would have. So, walked down to the bluffs and two miles away, and I remember I was walking up to Jack Bloom's house, and he sees me, and, uh, you know, his dogs bark comes out, oh, hey, Stanley, hey, how you doing? I remember going something like, all right, you know, and of course my leg by now is starting to stiffen up big time, you know, and, and uh, and, yeah, yeah, all right, you know, and, uh, and he said, what's the matter with your leg, you know, you know, because he was, well, you know, it's just walking a little stiff, then I said, I just got bit by a bear, you know, <laughs> what, you know, yeah, man, I just got pulled out of the tree by a bear, you know, so they had me there. They took my blood all dripping all over the floor. And uh, so they looked at it and they said, man, we got to get you out of town. This is deep, you know. And uh, it, you know, turns out it went way under my kneecap. It was a compression bite, you know. Mm -hmm. They got inch and a half long teeth or two inch long teeth, but it was a three inch. They had a Q -tip tip, three inch, six inch long Q-tip, three halfway into my knee. He said, the doctor said, that's a three inch. And they called up a bear specialist on infection and all that stuff. And they asked him about it. And he said, yeah, when bears bite, they compress yep. so much that, you know, even though the fangs aren't that long, the fang goes in a lot further. Went under my kneecap. If he had held on to me and shook me or anything, he just, might have, just would have ripped my kneecap right off. Because the doctor said any amount of shaking or anything, you know. So, uh, yeah, so then came the trip down river almost killed me. That was worse than the bear bite, but Cook Chop fought and Bill Flores brought me down the river in a little water with Bill Flores had this great big river boat with two forty horse jets on it, you know. A little water man cruising over those sandbars, heading down the river and oh shit, here comes another one, you know, the riffles, you know, and that much water in the riffles and the motors flying in the air and having to go full speed around bends and almost hitting walls and hitting a sweeper and wiping the console off and sinking the boat, running it clean up in the sandbar and having to lay me out in the sandbar. I was all drugged up and I remember I was so high on the downers, you know, 
telling Tom, come on, push that boat harder, you know, and I was feeling no pain. You know. Yeah. You know. Where they took you into uh, yeah, the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. The hospital was operating back yeah. 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 I tell you, by the time I hit the Yukon, I was feeling pain. I was on pain killers, man. I was, I was hurting, man. They brought me in there and gave me a shot of morphine. I didn't care what happened. You know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you take a little bit of morphine, it makes quite a difference. Yeah, I remember I was laying in Ken Lilly's bed. He hadn't showed up, he was off in town. And guys brought me down to Ken Lilly's house and said, well, just, just, just lay in his bed here, you know, and we'll get Ken here. Holmes, you know, he'll be home here soon. Ken walks in, I'm laying in his bed. And, and I started giving him, I was just, you know, why is that shit on him? I was feeling no pain. I was kicking him out of his house. All sorts of things, you know. I had him that, was, that wasn't at the cottage. That was in Tanana. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. After about a couple of days there, he was wondering what this damn smell was in the house. And, and uh, uh, he couldn't figure it out. And then he, sniffing around, went over to the coat rack and finally uh, pulls out this damp shirt, you know, it was my fishing shirt that I had on that day, you know, and of course being in the river, you know, it was all soaking, it was kind of damp still, and when they brought me to his house, you know, they hung his, hung his shirt up with the thing, and it started getting a little rotten after a It'll couple do. of days, you know, <laughs> fish smelling, you know, fish started getting a little sour, you know. <laughs> there some fish in it? Yeah. Huh? Were there any fish? No, in? it was just, you know, all fish slime all yeah. over it, so. Yeah, I was there about a week. Another week. Jack Bloom walked up the next day to tell Helen what happened. Never made it. He made it about a mile from here, and then the next day I had to walk the rest of the way. But uh, he was yelling. What was he doing? He was yelling Helen about a mile down the river or a half mile down the river or something. And uh, he was yelling, Helen! He's got a big booming voice, you know. Because he didn't really know where I lived, you know, back then. This is up here too much in the summer. Well, uh, and Helen heard that. She swore she heard somebody yelling Helen like around dark, which is about when I should have been coming home. And uh, and so, you know, okay, that's Stanley, and he's getting close to home, because usually when I hit the slew down for about a quarter mile, I would yell, Helen, or I'd yell, I'd have the scream, I'd make the carry a long way and the dogs and start back and you know, let her, yeah. let's just let her know I'm coming, you know, wild man scream, you know, and uh, uh, anyway, a couple hours go by, I don't show up, well, should I should have been here 15 minutes after she heard me yell, she starts worrying about me, you know, she knew she heard fucking hell and, you know, yeah. heard me yell, you know, and, uh, but Jack had gone back to down river another half mile, camped out in this nice sandbar and figured to wait till the next day, you know. So she goes off, a couple of dogs down the river and a gun, looking for me. And she was, she was sure I got eaten by a bear, no mm-hmm. question about it, you know, because she was looking for fucking legs dragged off in a bush, and, you know, and, and yeah. so she knew something was wrong. You're in Helen, I'm late, way late, you know, it's 11 o'clock at night or something. And she's Oh, down she's down there, there looking yeah, around at that time? In the dark, you know. Oh, wow. You know, and she's worried about bears herself, and she's sure I just got eaten. Yeah, she was, uh, yeah, and the next day Jack Bloom walked out in the sandbar and, and uh, yells over to her, you know, Stanley is all right, or something like that, and, or we're Stanley, and he's okay. And Jack says, uh, we had a card game last night, and I won, and I got you. <laughs> yeah, you know, we got drunk and had a card game, and I won you. So here I am, you know. And, <laughs> and she just, well, she felt obviously she felt a lot better at that point. And then he came she over. She knew you were alive. Came over and told told her what happened. Yeah. Yeah. However cold it is, you know. Yeah. Maybe wasn't quite cold, right? You know, it's, I was really cold. I remember finally found the fucking trail. So I didn't on the backside, 14 miles, but. Uh, and by 
now, you know, this leader I had, which now I wouldn't even consider a leader. Dog little one. Most unloyal dog in the world, you know. Try and run you over a cliff or, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. I thought, you know, I wouldn't even consider it a lead dog now, but um, <coughs> I'm going down this real obscure trail down the backside of Fort Canal, that long stretch where we're going down, you know, and heading down there. And, and she's, uh, keeps leading me off the trail into the trees, you know, and it was so obscure the trail that I couldn't tell maybe until I was a quarter mile off the trail. I was actually off the trail because, you know, I couldn't see that much. And it was more of a hoping they're going on, they're staying kind of on the trail. Back in those days, when we have tried buds or anything, or yeah. anything, you know, just hoping they're kind of going the right direction, you know, and maybe all hard packed and or something right on the ridge there. And anyway, she'd, all of a sudden, I'd, head, I'd be in sloppy down off the hill, because it's still, maybe not that as much of a white as it was way up at the top, but, and I'm, I'm freezing my ass off. I remember reaching into the food I was hauling out, Oh, by now it's getting dark. Okay, I get to the top 14 mile at sunrise. Okay, now I'm about two miles from where I was at sunrise, and it's starting to get dark. True. Okay, I spent the whole day all cruising up. around. Right, cruising. Well, I wish I, you know, <laughs> wallowing around, you know. And I've, I'm about had it, you know, and I'm real weak, and, and I'm cold, and I'm hungry, frozen get something in my belly and and, uh, and this lead dog I, I, I beat it and I throw it back up in the trail and get it going and and uh, and this so anyway I finally said all right all right I had Skipper hadn't been too much of a leader at that point because this is this leader that Joe Rennie told me to lead you know so this is what I used you know you know told this was a leader so this is back when you're green yeah green you know <laughs> and so I put Skipper in because he had led a couple of times for me and angst and goddamn loyal dog like just knew what he had to do you know he knew I was in trouble and he starts going down the trail hitting me and all right you know he could smell it well, yeah yeah he just sensed it or something you know he's a smart dog he knew which way we had to go you know he hadn't been over that trail too many times we probably this is uh, the second year out here second winter or something and uh so uh but this this other dog, I had, uh, like, I'd put back in the swing, you know, just kind of lead us. And mm -hmm. she would, even though he would be going straight, she would still try mm -hmm. to drag him off. But I would see her, and I'd go up there, and I'd stop at, you know, and beating her. And, and uh, she did this, uh, oh, I don't know how many times. And I don't know, my thinking wasn't straight, because what I should have done, oh, then I let her loose. And I said, all right, get the hell out of the team, you know. And then what she would do is she'd run out in front of the leader and try to get him off and lead him off, you know. And he would follow her because he was <coughs> not that smart. I couldn't tell him yeah. GI. I didn't know any of that stuff then, you know. And I was like, man, I got to do something. And then I couldn't catch her because she had been, I had hit her so many times. Mm -hmm. She's spooky. And, and it was like, <clears throat> I, if I had, I should have put it back in the, in the wheel, see. But now I couldn't yeah. catch her. And every time I got going, and it was like, you know, I had to get to that gap. There's no way I could spend the night out as wet as I was, in the wet clothes I was, and getting to sleep and I could make it through the night. And I would freeze. So I had to get to that gap from, I don't know, eight miles away or something, you know. Yeah. Seven miles away. It was probably about the middle of the between. Well, back in those days, it wasn't a gap. Back in those days, anyway, the site you had to go all the way back to site. Or you had to make it to that gap, which was close to that gap. So uh, I ran, I took the Jeep pole, you know, I had Jeep pole in the sled those days, you know, you know Jeep pole in the sleds, and back then with the small thing. Yep. And the only thing I could think of doing was, man, I had to kill her, you know, and, and with that long pole, you know, I could get that close to us, I, w I went up to her with that damn pole, and I swung up a pole at her, and then I, I hit her, the last thing I seen, she was, her, she was heading off through the snowstorm with her legs around my foot. I mean, I was in that bad of shape. It was not, I was, you know, it was death life, here, life, or, life death. or death here, you know. And I could not handle that dog, and she was going to kill me. Yep. And uh, whether she meant it or not, you know. And so, uh, you 
know, that did it. She took off. That was enough for her. She wasn't going to hang around me no more. And that skipper just, I got him going on that trail, and we went all the way down that hill, and then those bridges would go over, and then we drop down into the valley and through the valley. And I remember by the time I came off those ridges, I had this, my, uh, my stocking hat, I had it pulled down clean over my face. And I was looking out through the fibers that didn't have the eye holes, and it wasn't one of them. Yeah. And I just look. I didn't even matter whether I saw or not anyway. And I'm just hanging on the sled, you know, trying to keep warm or something like that. I had to cover up my whole face. I started to breathe, you know, my face. And, and uh, I got to the damn cabin. I, uh, all I could do when I got to the cabin was undo the back lines on the dogs. They didn't have neck lines in those days. So undo the back lines on the dogs. And I couldn't unpack the sled, and I went inside the cab, and I couldn't light a fire anymore, because now my hands are so cold from undoing this and apps or whatever. I couldn't even light a fire in the place, and I just curled up in a ball. Um, my pocket pulled over me, and, and just laid there for a couple of hours, and got my strength back and whatever. Then after I did, I, uh, uh, after, uh, After I got my strength back, the funny thing was I, I went outside to look to see if the dogs were okay, you know, and I was get some stuff for a light of fire. And I looked, and there's this black dog skipper who just saved my life. I mean, there's no way. He was just right on that damn trail. You could, even though there's no sign of it in places, yeah. you know. And, he could feel it, bro. He could, he could, yeah, I swear it was sense because he was, it turns out at times I'd realize he's right on the old Alakaka Trail, the old rut. And there would, you know, we didn't even necessarily travel on that. We just uh, put a different, you know, it was just uncanny, you know, just to watch him pull over those ridges and just like stay right. You know, at times I could see he's right where that rut is. You could see a little depression in the snow, and and it wasn't even that. It wasn't even where the trail was. You know, he was staying on the old trail. You know, I, I don't know. It's just uncanny. But he, anyway, I look and there he is. He's up on top of my um, sled. And he's just <laughs> ripping into them food. I mean, that's the kind of dog he was. It saved your damn life. Yeah. But he's so instinctive, and his instincts are so strong for, like, food and sex. You couldn't keep him away from, like, a, a damn female and eat food. You couldn't keep him away from it. Anyway, here he is ripping into my damn food. You know, <laughs> I didn't do it. I just, you know, hey, get away from there. And, you know, and put around the food. I, just, I, didn't, I didn't get <laughs> But he was the one that was half wolf. Ah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, Skipper. Black. Skip, yeah. yeah, black, half lad, half wolf. Yeah. Did he, did he have any uh, grayness in him from wolf and so on? All black? Yeah, it was pretty much all black. He actually, the fur didn't look, he had a little bit of white yeah. on him. Of course, it could have been black wolf or who knows. You know, he mm -hmm. actually didn't really, he was pretty stocky. He was kind of stocky. I don't really, he was a bad, like I've always wanted a wolf. Uh, and I still I tried it, although it'd probably be a stupid idea. I've always kind of wanted to try wolf in my dogs, try and breed it in or something, you know. But he was always a bad example because here he was in Newfoundland lab, you know, heavy set, you know, and that was what was mixed with the wolf. You know, if you had like uh, some Irish set or something more racy or mixed with the wolf, you know, yeah. he, but, you know, to start off with that kind of wolf, you know, would have been, yeah. I don't think it would have. His feet used to ball up real bad, you know, because of that lab. Yeah. Do you trim the hair? Mm -hmm. Still, still yeah. ball up. Yeah. Well, no, it was better, but yeah, I used to. He had real curly hair on his feet or something. Yeah. yeah. I know. Yeah. When we left Manly this year, the, before I got softy, I had to stop about five times mm -hmm. and clean the feet. And uh, the next day, I took scissors and trimmed all of it out. That was it. I didn't have any more problems. Yeah. But that uh, you ended up after you left the cabin, you got back in here the next day. Hmm. Probably. Yeah, probably just made it one day in here. Yeah. 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 When, you, you, when you got a good lead dog, you know, I noticed out there when we were on the Yukon that you could the wind would, had blown and snowed so much you could not see the trail. Those dogs could smell it. The thing we had to do was start cutting right across. When they found it, uh, you could tell. They're up on top, and they'd follow it a little bit, and it's you just, you know, ha, 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 
Marines, and they were right on that sucker. You're up and going along, and every now and then they fall off. And uh, the other lead dog would help pull them back in, and you know, away they go. They just kept right on going. You couldn't see trail one out there. Yeah, but they they could find it. I think they that's could. pretty good too, because they had that wasn't like their trail or nothing. Else. Right. Yeah. I thought they did a hell of a job. But, uh, mm-hmm. And they could, for some reason, I think they could smell that trail when other dogs have been down it or something. Yeah. Smell it, feel it. Yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. And, and, and partly feeling it. They could probably, they can do all that better than we can. They can oh, no doubt about feel it. Feel with their feet better we can. They can. Smell better than we can, and there's a sense that. Have you, uh, have you ever had any uh, uh, go around with grizzlies when you're out there with a the dog? Yeah, I used to hunt the grizzlies with dogs. That's how I used to get them, you know, a lot of times, you know, because they would hold the, the bear. Oh, you know, I mean, if one showed up, well, usually we wouldn't shoot them in the summer. Yeah. You know, we'd wait till we, we had fall. a date in the fall. You know, there's a, we want the fat to build up. Hey, you, know, you want plates? Yeah. And cabinet. There's big plates in there. So you wait till the fat build up on it. Yeah, you know, we have a date uh, October. Let's see, September was our, oh, no, 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 hell, it was August 15th. Which, you know, there wasn't, they have a lot more fat on them than August 15th, you know, in the end. But, but you know, way too long and they've gone from the river. That yeah, was a month before our moose date, I remember. You know, September 15th was our, was our moose date. August was our 15th was our grizzly date. But prior to that, you know, we never wanted to see them. And usually, by, like August 15th, you know, they're thinned out a little bit. We'd sometimes have to go hunt them as opposed to, you know, in the summer, hell, they're just showing up here and there. Yeah. You know, and, but, uh, you know, usually by then you got to, kind of go up and get them. If one did show up, you know, I'd just shoot it, you know. But if, like, what we'd do is we'd go down to these sloughs or something where we'd know there's been one all summer or something and take about three dogs or some five dogs down and then we would bring chains with us and when we'd get close to the slough, you know, maybe the dogs would start smelling the air or something, we'd chain the damn dogs up, you know, and, uh, and she'd grab a big stick and start beating the dogs, you know, out, beating the dogs, and just whacking them every time they start, you know, getting real hyper and barking, because we want to keep everything real quiet, not sneak up to the slough, smart the bears, and then when we'd, you know, see where, the, where they were and what we were dealing with, you know, if there was one there, then we'd let the damn dogs loose, you know, and we'd run after them, and then uh, they'd get the dog, and the bear, and they wouldn't ever touch it, you know, but they'd get pretty damn close, and the bear is fast, but he's not fast as dogs, and usually I never got hurt, you know, I, as a matter of fact, I'd never seen a, one of my dogs get hurt when I was there, I seen one come home after a fight, I heard, heard him fight down the river with one in the slough, and he came home limping, and his eye a little bruised up, and, you know, I have had dogs hurt, but I never had them hurt while I was hunting them, but, uh, but yeah, they'd hold the dog, it'd be nipped and tucked, and bear wouldn't even be concerned with us and pop the bear. Yeah. You know, yeah, one year we did so many of them, you know, three of them damn things, we never even, uh, never, never even had to shoot a moose that winter. Stayed because the bear meat all winter. <coughs> and how about dogs? Did you feed dogs grizzly? Yeah, only if we had to shoot one in the middle of summer. Yeah. But, you know, that was, it was preferred meat. I mean, if we get grizzly, man, it was, we considered that if we got a grizzly bear in the fall and then got our moose, you know, a month later, it was like, you know, we just, it was just a sense of, boy, it's going to be a fat winter. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good winter, man. We got bacon, you know, it's going to be nice warm out in the draft land with all that fat. And then we had the meat, you know, the moose. Yep. Yeah. 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 And as far as the, uh, the, uh, uh, bear, you, so you made the ham and bacon out mm-hmm. of that? Yeah, I made bacon out of the fat. Our, our idea of bacon was, would, would really be called something like salt pork or something. I mean, uh, you know, it's just pretty much pure fat, almost no meat. Mm-hmm. You know, we just skim off that fat, and that was our bacon. I used to sit down in the draft line, and I, I swear to God, 
I would cook up a huge frying pan. It would be at least a pound. It would be a chunk of, you know, fucking fat that big. I'd cook it all up. And when I, when I cook bacon, I just get it kind of, just start it sizzling. You know, don't fry any fat out. Just start it sizzling. Even this day, if I cook commercial bacon, I can't stand bacon, brown bacon. Yeah. I mean, when it's limp, that's the way I eat bacon, you know. And I'd eat that whole damn thing of bacon. And I'd fry them another time. I think some of those days, I bet I was eating eight, nine thousand calories on the goddamn trap line. I had to be, you know, because I'd eat some bread after that too. That would be my supper. Yeah. Two pounds of fucking bacon and and uh, and a good chunk of. Fuck. <laughs> but you were on snowshoes all the time, uh, working like hell. Mm-hmm. And you didn't have the dogs with you, did you? Yeah. Oh yeah. I always had dogs. With me. Yeah, I'd be riding dogs, but yeah, I'd be hired a long day. You know, I'd be on snowshoes a lot of times. Yeah, we went snowshoes behind them. Mm-hmm. You were traveling. Or be in front of us at times. I used to, they could break the trail. They'd go faster than me. They, you know, even, even slow break the trail. You know, I hope dogs go four miles an hour. It's usually fast, you know. Yeah. Now, hell, I haven't broke trail in front of dogs. Even like this winter when the trails are all screwed up out here and people were trying to make it out from the site and getting a few miles out of the site, couldn't, couldn't make it. Like I, I, can, I, I can remember one trip where two different people tried to come out from town to make it out the trail and you could see where the dogs were going off into the trees and barking on them and they, so they were on snowshoes and stuff. And I remember that one time. I saw those two sets of prints, one from one day and one from another day. I headed in from town here. When I got to uh, 14 Mile Hill, I broke out that whole section. And then they still had enough poop to break it out. I never had hair in snowshoes. It's kind of a... That's a good dog, though. It's kind of a... I don't know. It's kind of a pride thing with me. You know, I mean, one of these days I'm going to get on snowshoes, you know. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll I just make them. I just make them do it. On the Yukon, we wore them right down to where they were just, like the, the dogs were done. You had to go break them. Well, I had, in fact, I had to load one in the sled. Just had her up bleed, and she just ended up dragging her. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I have, yeah, done that too. I mean, it's not like they're, they're in. It's just usually I got it gauged right. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, you've been doing it long enough. Yeah. All the rest of them. Yeah, but you buy it with 100% of meat, Kenneth. They usually you can see them coming, and about three, four feet away, they just turn and go off. Mm-hmm. Great stuff. I've never seen anything like it. It is. It's amazing. down the woods and you had to go very far, I think they would drive you nuts. Oh, mm-hmm. Definitely. I don't know how you handle it around here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we always had bug dope. You did? Mm-hmm. I've, I've run out a couple of times and you know, I get a, geez, I, I say the same thing as you. I don't, I think this would drive a man nuts. If you didn't have much energy, you had a rest, you, you were real tired. I think it's like the same. Yeah, we ever got in trouble somewhere. I've done out in the flats. I've never done it with spruce boughs in the woods. I bet you could do the same thing with spruce boughs or any number of things. But out in the flats is these uh, washes that have like a lot of uh, real tall grass in them. Yeah. And uh, one time I was coming across there with this uh, fellow that was sick. And fuck, it took us like three days to cross, to go from that last 10 miles. You know, I went out and picked them up. And Across the flats and got them here. But uh, we were at a bug dope. And so I went to uh, these places where all this grass, and I just, just rip it all up and make these big mounds of grass. And then I just go into the mound. And your mosquitoes, they got a, they're not like black flies, they're a little yeah. weasel, they're way in something they got, they like to fly around, you know. And they're not good at walking. Right. 
<coughs> save your ass. Yeah. You know, and you probably do the same with spruce bottles or something. You gotta make a real big pile to goddamn. If you sand it easy, stay. You know, you make a big pile. Yeah, yeah. But that worked. Yeah, like you say, sanity is at stake. There's no doubt about it. I can remember riding a motorcycle and uh, uh, on endurance runs and getting stuck in a swamp. And the mosquitoes so thick around your head that just drive you crazy while you're trying to get the motorcycle unstuck, you know. And you're just totally exhausted, pulling and tugging on it, and just a cloud of them hanging around your head and 20 of them biting you all the time. And you're all exasperated because the motorcycle is stuck and you, you know you're losing the, the race and, and uh, multiply that times a hundred times up here and you ever uh, notice how you know you're, you're talking like around motorcycles you ever notice and somebody else mentioned this to me one time and i said yes i definitely absolutely notice this i've never talked to anybody about it but they love they seem to be attracted to like gasoline yeah they love fumes from the warmth or something of an engine. I don't know what it is. But well, you can pour gasoline, pouring it, you know. Yeah, yeah. The fumes, you know, it's a, I don't know if they're, they're so many millions of years old and they gas or something. I don't know what the trip is, but they, they like them. Yeah, I've noticed they, they will hang around it. that's also also thought well maybe it's just because when you're trying to pour gas you're holding that can <laughs> you know, I don't know 